Hello, welcome to Reso Coder. Floating action button aka FAP is a staple of apps using material design. What if you need the user to choose from multiple different actions? Well, you have to use a floating action menu which is basically a FAP which upon click displays multiple smaller FAPs. There are two ways in which we can add a floating action menu. Using a third-party library is one option, but that is not always ideal because libraries can get outdated. Much more viable option is to code it ourselves and use the latest and greatest things from the design support library made by Google which guarantees we will always be able to use the bleeding edge features. By the end of this tutorial you will be able to create this kind of app. It has a simple floating action button, but when you click it, it opens up floating action menu. And there is also some basic animation over here. And when we click on one of the smaller fabs, it's gonna display a toast. And when we click somewhere on the screen, which by the way dims as the fab opens, the floating action menu is going to hide. And these animations are not material design compliant, but this is not a video about animations, but that will come later. But here we are using just simple animations which are not physics based. Alright, so as I've already mentioned, we are gonna be using a design support library, so let's add it into our project. We wanna right click on references and manage NuGet packages. We wanna click on browse here and search for design support library. We wanna select this one released by Xamarin Incorporated and just click on install here. Since we are using app compat support library, we need to set an app compat theme for our app. You would normally create your own awesome looking theme, but in this tutorial we are gonna use the default one. To change the theme for the whole app, we need to go to Android Manifest. That is located under properties and now double click Android Manifest. And over here we wanna add Android theme is equal to add style forward slash theme dot app compat dot light dot dark action bar. Now that we have all of the colors nicely prepared, let's add some icons which will be displayed on the floating action buttons. We could do it the old fashioned way and add PNG images, but we are going to add vector drawables. When you are using design support library, you are also using the vector drawable support library, so there is no problem with that. So we wanna go to materialdesignicons.com and links in the description. Now we wanna choose an icon, so for example plus, right here. Click on icon package and download vector drawable. And after you have all of the icons, we wanna copy them and paste them in the drawable folder. Drawable folder is located under resources, drawable, and now click on control V. We should also change the color of these icons to be white, so just double click on an icon, and change this 000 to say FFF. And we want to do the same thing for all of the icons. Once we have all that, let's create a layout for main activity. We want to go under layout, right click on main and we want to view code. The root element is going to be Android support design widget coordinator layout, just like this. And we also want to change the closing tag. We can delete this Android orientation and add another XML namespace. It's going to be called app and it's going to be equal to the same thing as this, but it will be just apk forward slash res auto. Now I just want to add a text view over here and this is completely not mandatory for this to work obviously. So this is just a simple text view and it represents the content of the main activity. Now we want to add the view which will dim the background when the floating action menu is opened. So view its ID will be equal to add plus ID forward slash BG fab menu, layout width and layout height will be match parent, Android background will be transparent black, so pound or hashtag 48, which represents the transparency. And now we want to say that this should be black. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 6 times 0. The default transparency of this view, so alpha, will be set to 0. And also Android visibility will be equal to gone by default. This will make Android act like the view is not there by default. Obviously, until we enable it manually. Now we want to add the main floating action button. Android support design widget floating action button. Its ID is going to be fab main. Layout width and height are going to be wrap content. Layout gravity will be equal to bottom binary or end. So it's going to be bottom end. And when you are using a left to right language, this will be bottom right. 
But when you are using right to left language like Hebrew or Arabic, this floating action button will be displayed on the bottom left. So that's nice to have. And now we want to set layout margin. And this is going to be equal to some material design compliant value. For this we are going to create a diamonds file. Diamonds is just short for dimensions. We want to create it under values. So we right click on values, add new item. It's going to be XML file and it's going to be called diamonds. And these are the material design compliant dimensions. You can either pause the video and write them, or you can also get the code from the link in the video description, which is going to take you to resocoder.com. And we want to set this layout margin to be equal to add diamond forward slash fab margin, which is 16 dp. Then app fab size will be equal to normal, and app src compat will be the plus icon, so add drawable forward slash ic plus. Now we want to add the two smaller floating action buttons. So let's copy this one, paste it above. ID will be fab air balloon, margin will be standard 23, Android visibility will be gone by default, Android rotation will be 90 by default. This is because we want to rotate it by using an animation. The fab size will be mini and the source image will be IC air balloon. Now we want to copy this floating action button, paste it below this, the ID will be fab cake and drawable will be also IC cake. Cool stuff. And now let's go to coding the main activity in C sharp. We want to open up main activity.cs. Main activity should derive from app compat activity. And we want to add the proper namespace. So just press control dot and hit enter. And inside our main activity, we should store private static bool is fab open. And we should also have references to the floating action buttons and also to the background view. So private floating action button. And let's also add the proper namespace here. It's going to be called fab air balloon and also private floating action button fab cake and fab main. We also want to keep track of private view and let's also use the proper namespace and it's going to be called BG fab menu. All right, now inside on create, we want to find the views in the layout and assign them to these references here. So fab air balloon is equal to find view by ID of type floating action button. And the ID is resource dot ID dot fab air balloon. And we want to do the same thing for the rest of the views. Alrighty, And now when the fab main is clicked, so fab main dot click, we want to subscribe to this event and call a lambda. So O for object, E for event arcs, and now equal greater sign for lambda to curly braces. And don't forget to put the semicolon afterwards. And if not is fab open, we want to show fab menu. And let's generate this method. So control dot and generate method. And else we want to close fab menu. And let's again generate this method. And when fab cake is clicked, we want to close fab menu and also display a toast. So toast dot make text context is this activity. The text to show will be cake and toast length will be short. Now copy this and paste it below. And we want to do the same thing when fab air balloon is clicked, but we want to say air balloon. And when BG fab menu is clicked, we again want to call a lambda. So O E, but this time we don't need to use any curly braces because this is going to be just one expression. And that is close fab menu. All right, now inside show fab menu, we want to set is fab open to be true. Then fab air balloon visibility will be equal to view states dot visible. And we want to do the same thing for fab cake and BG fab menu. And then we want to animate fab main. So fab main dot animate. And we want to change the rotation to be 135 degrees. We also want to animate BG fab menu and change its alpha to be one. So it's going to be completely visible. So BG fab menu dot animate dot alpha and it's going to be one. Also fab air balloon dot animate. We want to change translation Y and this is going to be equal to minus resources dot get dimension. And we want to get the dimension standard 100, which we have defined in the diamonds file. And that is located under values right here. So resource dot dimension dot standard 100. And we want to put this below so it looks nice. And we also want to animate rotation to be equal to zero. Now we want to copy this 
and paste it below and we want to change standard 100 to be standard 55. Now inside close fab menu we want to set is fab open to false and we also want to animate the views. So we can just copy this, paste it here, fab mains rotation will be 0, the alpha of bg fab menu will be also 0, fab air balloons translation will be 0 and the rotation will be 90 which is the default value of rotation for these fabs. And we want to apply the same values to fab cake. And no, I haven't renamed this, so fab cake. And also up here it will be fab cake. Alright, and we can just copy this and paste it here. And we are almost set. The last thing that we want to do is to set the visibility of these views to be gone. For this we need to set the listener for this animation. So set listener. And in Java and Kotlin this is absolutely simple. Sadly C Sharp doesn't have a thing like objects in Kotlin or like nested anonymous classes in Java. C Sharp has only regular classes. It has anonymous classes but they are nothing like Java's anonymous classes. Because of this we need to create a private class fab animator listener right down here so private class fab animator listener it's gonna derive from Java dot lang dot object and also animator and let's use the proper namespace dot i animator listener now click on this interface press control dot and hit enter to implement interface we can delete all of these throw statements and up here we want to create a view array views to hide and this class will have a public constructor and by the way, if you want to learn more about classes and constructors and all of that kind of stuff, click on the card in the corner. And this constructor will have a params parameter of type view array, and it's going to be called views to hide. And inside this constructor, we want to set this dot views to hide to be equal to views to hide, which is the parameter. Cool. And now in the method on animation end, if is fab open is not true. So the floating action menu is currently closed. For each var view in views to height, we want to set view.visibility to be equal to gone. Cool, and now let's go back up. And we want to finally set a listener for this animation. And it's going to be new fab animator listener. And the argument will be bg fab menu, fab cake, and fab air balloon. Because these are the views which we want to hide. Alright, and now we should be able to click on start here. And once the app is built and deployed to the emulator, it's going to look just like this. And we can click on plus. It's going to display these floating action buttons. We can click on cake and it doesn't do anything. And I know precisely why it does that. Let's go back to code, scroll a bit up. And we also need to call show on these toasts. So stop the execution of the code. And we want to write dot show and also down here dot show. And after this minor embarrassment, let's again run the app. And now click on this floating action button and click on cake and it's going to say cake. Click on air balloon and it's going to say air balloon. You can also see the beautiful animations, which are not material design compliant, but whatever, they are still nice. And when we click somewhere on the screen, the fab menu is going to hide. And also when we click on the plus icon again, which is now cross icon, it's going to hide as well. The best part of this is that because this menu is comprised of regular fabs, it will respond to things like snack bar without a problem. You aren't going to need to code that behavior yourself. If you want to learn more about snack bars, click on the card in the corner. If you want to get the code from this tutorial, click on the link in the video description, which is going to take you to resocoder.com. Thank you so much for watching this video and if it made you a better Android developer, don't forget to like this video and also share it. If you don't want to miss more tutorials like this, subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button. If you want to say something, leave a comment, follow me on social media and see you in the next video.